right, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the Denali webinar for October 21st, 2015. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to get better reports and more options using segmented general ledger. Uh, account segments is what that's referring to. So, My name is Jeremy Beislein and I will be your presenter today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put those in the chat uh, and at the end of the webinar I'll go through and answer the questions that you put in there. Uh, anything that you want to ask about during the webinar, that would be fine. If we don't get through all of your questions by the end of our time, if we run out of time, then check back on the website and I'll have all of your answers posted there for the questions that were presented today. All right, so today we're going to be talking about general ledger account number segments. Uh, we're going to basically talk about the benefits of using segments in your general ledger chart of accounts. Uh, we'll kind of go over the basics uh, of your chart of accounts, how to set up the segments in Denali, uh, using segments, and then we'll wrap up with the questions and answers. So we'll get started with that now, so here we go. All right, uh, so just a few uh, overviews real quick. Basically what segments are in the general ledger account number structure is they're sections of your account numbers for your chart of accounts in general ledger. They're basically the way you break out your account numbers in different parts, so to speak. And the benefits of doing that is all about the reporting, how you want to track your transactions that post to the specific account. If you want to break those up in different sections when they're posting to an account, then we create those segments for that. So you would basically uh, show an account number here that's just, uh, we've got eight digits or we have a an account number that's four digits, but then there's a second segment that's four digits as well. So you broke it up into two parts here. Uh, that way you have the option of tracking account number 4105 and then breaking that out into several different categories of whatever you want to call those segments. So what are the benefits of the segments? Uh, well, general ledger segments allows you to set up your chart of accounts you have your basic chart of account set up and then you break out each account. Some people call them sub-accounts. Other people like to have accounts, uh, transactions posting to account based on different groupings such as departments or programs or locations. Uh, so there's several uses for setting up your accounts. And it's all going to be for reporting purposes. Using the GL account filter, you'll be able to see how those will work, and I'll get to that when I show you how account numbers are set up in Denali for that. So how do we set up account segments? I'm going to switch over to the Denali General Ledger here for just a moment. Uh, first of all, you would basically, uh, when you're setting up your chart of accounts, I bring up the account setup here in Denali, then we have all of our accounts set up here, uh, just like most other accounts in our demo company here, we have assets that are in the 1,000 range, liabilities in the 2,000s. Uh, then we have equities in the 3,000s right here. And then we go down to our revenues, which are 4,000s. Expenses are 5,000 and 6,000. So those are the two different um, uh, range for expenses. Then we we have other revenues and other expenses in 7,000, 8,000, and 9,000 as needed. Uh, just however you set up your chart of accounts is entirely up to you. But you notice our account numbers, uh, we have four digits, then we have it broken out in two digits for a second segment, we call that. And then the third segment, we have kind of a, a letter, a, a alpha character segment there with four characters in that segment that we have here. So what does that all mean? Well, when we're setting up our chart of accounts in Denali, we first describe what each of the segments are going to be set up for. Now, what we're looking at here is the Denali fund accounting. So fund accounting is great to show this example because one of our segments actually designates the fund in our nonprofit demonstration company here. And then we have a second segment that demonstrates the actual account number and a third segment that is what we call the program. Uh, you can go up to six segments in Denali, so we can add three additional segments and label them whatever we want them to be called. 
Now once we've created our labels for what our segments are going to be, then we go organize those segments and put them in the order we want them to be in. We also designate how many characters each segment needs to be on the chart of accounts. So a lot of this is uh, probably going over your heads, but bear with me. We're going to get to the benefit of using these segments when we do the report, running the reports, and you'll see how this works. So when we set up our segments here in the chart of accounts in our demonstration company, we've set it up with three segments. So every account in our general ledger is going to have three segments. Our first segment is labeled as the account number and it comprises of four digits. Our second segment we've labeled it as the program and it is comprised of two digits. And our third segment is the fund which also is four characters. Now the fund is what you would see in the nonprofit accounting system. If you're using the for-profit system you can label any of the segments whatever you want to call them except for one of the segments must be designated the account number. In the fund accounting system one segment must be the account number and one must be the fund. So we put the account number as our first segment, the fund as our last segment. Well, let's see, I need to, what if I want to use uh, a location segment? I can add another segment. We're going to make that, let's say, three characters, and we'll call it the location. And I don't have location specified, so I'll label it under user defined field one, and we'll come, we'll do that first here, location. <laughs> Sorry, I bumped the mic there. <laughs> Location. And then we go back to our account segment setup, and I can now say, okay, our account segment, we want to use a fourth segment. We're going to put it three characters, and we're going to call it location right there. So now here's what our account number structure is going to look like. It's going to consist of a four-digit account number, a two-digit program, a three-digit location, three character or digits, you can use letters or numbers in any of these, and then a four-character fund. And that will be what our account number is consistent of. So that's how you would set it up. You can actually go all the way up to six segments if needed, and you can label those segments as needed, and you can put in however many digits each of those need to be. I'm going to cancel that for now. I don't want to change the location of my fund accounting setup here. So. so once we've set up our segments, for our demonstration, we've got three segments. We've got our chart of accounts set up with uh, one digit. The, the first four digits is the account number. Second four digits is our program. Third four digits is our fund. So looking at this, I have got an account number 7800, which is contract labor. But I've got four different funds that I need to uh, expense that out in. Actually, I only have three here, but I have one program in the grants and fellowship fund. I have program, the main program, which is just labeled as zero, and then program one, which is zero one. So two separate account listings here for the same account. However, they are separated out on our income statement as needed. So if I wanted to also add program one to the federal fund, I could simply do that by selecting this account here. And then I can say new 7800-01 federal fund. And that's going to be contract labor for the federal fund program one. I'll just do P1 for that example there. That's an expensive count. Um, it's going to be uh, administrative expense. Save that. So now I've created a new uh, for the federal fund, and I could also add it to the administration fund too if I'd like. Just change the description here to administration fund. Save that one. And let me see what Grants and Fellowship is showing. Uh, I'm going to change that to P1 so it'll be consistent with what we're looking at, looking at here in our demonstration. So I created a few extra accounts for program one. Now the idea behind that is as I'm posting transactions, I can now select it's contract labor, it's for the administration fund, but it's actually for program one, not just for our general program. 
So we're going to separate that out under program one. The advantage of that is now when I'm running my reports, such as my revenue and expense report, I can now look at all of my revenue and expenses for all funds, but I only want to see the revenue and expenses for program one. So I'm going to put that in my account filter here because of this segment that I've set up under program one. So now as you can see when I run this report, all I'm going to see are the account are the revenue and expenses for program one only. So for example, we have a revenue line for program one called sales by maintenance contractors. And there it is, program one. Then I've got outside services for grants and fellowships. I've got administration contract labor, there's the one I just created. Federal fund, there's the one I just created. This one was already in there. So now we have a revenue and expense report for only program one. And it, it allows us to filter out everything else. But what if I want to see the same report for all programs, but I only want to see it for my grants and fellowship fund? Using the third segment, I can run the same report now, but it's only for my grants and fellowships. It's all revenue accounts for all programs, but only for grants and fellowships, as you can see there. All expenses under all programs, but only for grants and fellowships because that is my third segment and I filtered it out here. And there's even program one is included because I said I want to see it for all programs, not just program zero. So everything is included, but it's only for the grants and fellowship fund. So now I've got the same report showing that. So using account segments, you can generate whatever reports you need in Denali in General Ledger as needed uh, and other parts of Denali as well. You can run the same report, such as your accounts payable report. I want to see um, a, a distribution, an expense distribution report, but I only want to see it for program one. So then I can run that and add all the accounts in program one, and there it is. Now in accounts payable, I've only got one account that has been affected by program one at this point, so that's why it's the only one listed there. Uh, a better example, maybe I want to see all of the federal funds account revenue and expense distribution. Nothing else but the federal fund. So this is our AP revenue and expense distribution report for all accounts but only for the federal fund. For all expense accounts in the accounts payable. And it shows us the detail of all the transactions that posted to all the accounts. But again, it's only showing us information for the federal fund. And then at the end of our report we have our total report here for all expenses and accounts payable for the federal fund only and how they've been distributed to what vendors. So using the account segment setup in Denali is the way to set that up for you to customize how you want to set up those reports. Another advantage of account segment setup is, is when you're running these reports you can be as detailed as you need to on your segments, you can have up to six segments, as many digits for each segment as needed, up to a total of 50 digits for the entire account number with all segments combined. And then using the account filter, you can put in exactly what you're looking for. Uh, there may be some other uh, options as well that you need uh, with the account filter. Within a segment, you can even separate out accounts. Let's say I only want to see a report that shows me all expenses but only those that start with the number six because we have a special category of expenses that are in our six thousands. So I'm only going to see a report starting with six. I'm going to do a year to date. And so now to get even more detailed on your account filter, uh, even though you've got your segments separated out, now all I'm seeing is accounts starting with six, but I'm seeing it for all programs, for all funds. Now, if I would have shown seven, I'd probably see all one in here because I've got some accounts in seven with all one, but none in six. So it's another way to use the account filter to filter out exactly what you're looking for in Denali 
no need to export the information to Excel and run your sorts and filters in Excel. You can just do it right here in Denali with a simple account filter setting that you set up when you're running that report. Maybe I want to see all 7,800 accounts. 7,800. Let's narrow it down a little more. So now all accounts that begin from that begin with 7-8 for all programs, all funds, is the only thing I'm going to see on this report. And there they are. Nothing else is included. And look, even program one is now included. So you can get as detailed as you need to with your segments, or on the account filter, you can also get even more detailed when you run the report. But then the question comes up, I always run a set, a set of reports that I use the account filter for for specific purposes, for my programs or my funds or whatever. Do I have to type that account filter in every time? Uh, Denali has a great feature that allows you to set up what's called an advanced filter code. Now the advanced filter code is the account filter for whatever report you're running and you can save that as a template. Let's say, for example, I want to see PR01, and then I want to use the filter code for program one only. Program 01, and that is going to be 01 right there. Everything else is included. So now I've saved that as a filter code. Now, this is just a simple example, but if your segments are complex and you and you've got a long account number, you can save those account filters so that you only have to put in the filter code instead of putting in, typing in the whole entire account filter as we've done there. And there's my PR01. So now it automatically knows to only run this report. And I forgot to print the account number. So let's put that back on there so that I can show you the example of what it actually is. There it is. So now as though I typed in the filter manually, I'm now using the code, the Program 01 code. And it even titles, puts that on the report here, showing the name of the code that I used to generate this report, the advanced filter code. So that way, you can customize your reports just by simply creating your filter codes to show you exactly what you're looking for and saving that as a template, as a code that you can go ahead and save that in. So with the Denali account segment setup, you've got a very easy way to set up your chart of accounts, organize your chart of accounts in those groupings, using those segments to group accounts together as needed. Same account number, it's just listed several times for the different segments that you have to get the exact report you're looking for. So with our fund accounting, we actually set it up to where you create all of your accounts, your four digit account numbers, and then you create however many funds you have. You can do this in the for-profit accounting as well just by setting up the segment. So now we create the account and then we put it in for all the different locations or the different funds in this case. Every account is coded to every fund as needed. So it's almost like having each program or fund or location have their own chart of accounts but then of course they're combined in the overall account. So for example in our system we have here, our fund accounting, 10, 10 is our cash account, but we have the cash account split up across the different funds that have the money in the bank. So our administration fund has this much money in the bank, our federal fund has this much in the bank, and our grants and fellowships doesn't have any in the bank right now. But the combined total of 10, 10 is our total bank balance for this account. And you can set up for-profit accounting the same way as needed. That way it sets up all of your accounts and it breaks them out for the different programs, funds, departments, locations, whatever you want to call those segments. Sub-accounts, some people use them for sub-accounts, that works as well. You set up a 1010 account as the main account and then you have a segment 01, 02, 03 or three digits or four digits for the sub-account under that account number. And that way you can filter it out as well. And it will show all of those numbers in each sub-account as needed and then you can run the report and do your groupings to combine those accounts to get your total for the main account.
All right, so that is pretty much the uh, segment setup in Denali and how to use the segments. So we go through the different options here. We showed the account filter. We showed how to set up the advanced filter code and how to run the reports using those account filters. Here's examples of the different reports that you can run with your segments, uh, which we showed that there using the segments. Uh, now, you can't please all people all the time, or can you? <laughs> Good question. If you set up your accounts right, you can get the reports you need for your managers or board of directors that they are looking for. Okay, so with that, we'll go ahead and jump into the questions here. Let's see what questions I have here. Got a question from Wendy here. Uh, says, could we set up a fund or special program identifying different programs for each program in the fund? Absolutely, Wendy. Basically what you would do is you would set up a segment for the fund and then you could set up another segment for the program. You can go up to six segments and then you can attach each account number to each fund and or each program as needed. So that way, like I was showing you in the example, you can run the report for just that fund for all programs or just that program for all funds or narrow it down to a specific fund and a specific program on that report. So you can do that as, uh, just by using that account filter or setting up an advanced filter code. Uh, another question, how do I print these slides? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one, uh, and that is a good question. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, to print the slides for the demonstration and also to review this webinar for the demonstration we did today, just go to the website right here on the screen that you've got up here on your screen. This website right here is where we're going to be posting this webinar along with this PowerPoint presentation. So you can download the PowerPoint presentation and print the slides, and that will also give you the notes that are included with the slides as well. And the notes are basically what we talked about today. All right, so that's all of our questions. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, definitely check out the website here to uh, look at the recordings. You can also see all of the past webinars we've done. Uh, you can look at the recordings for all of those. The webinar that was done today will be up on our website in a couple of days, so make sure you check out for that. All right, we still got another couple of minutes, so Don popped in a question. How do I set up a new group code to make my own advanced reports? So I think you're talking about, uh, Don, I think you're talking about the General Ledger advanced report groups. Um, in order to set that up, check out the webinar. Matter of fact, let's see if I can click right here bring it up here. There is a webinar that I did on that, on advanced report groups in General Ledger. Uh, definitely check that one out because I did a complete demonstration on that. But basically what you would do is you would uh, set up your advanced report groups by grouping your accounts together in, there it is right there, using advanced GL reports, the webinar we did on February 18th. So go to the website and check out that webinar and that will give you more information on how to set that up. Uh, you can also contact support and schedule support or training uh, if you need one-on-one uh, -on -one help with that. Um, you can also refer to the General Ledger User's Guide at uh, CougarMountainService.com. But yeah, that's basically done just by going to the Advanced Report Group settings and you can group accounts together in your own custom reports. Okay, well, it's been a pleasure, guys. Uh, be sure to check back. Uh, make sure you uh, check out the website for upcoming recordings uh, or upcoming webinars. Uh, we don't have any additional webinars scheduled yet, but we will have some additional ones scheduled soon, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. Uh, check your email as well, and we will uh, keep you updated on what webinars are coming up and also to look at all of the past webinars we've done. We've got several of them up there now, so definitely check it out. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for attending today, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.